welcome to our blog. Here we are in the very beautiful, lush garden of Lou Gardens here in Orlando. Uh, it has been a pleasure for us to be able to, this day to tell you um, tales from Africa. And today I'm going to be talking about our pygmy evangelism trip. It was an exciting time in the year of 1992. Uh, the Christmas of 1992, we were able to, we heard that the pygmies were available uh, close at hand that we could maybe reach them with the gospel. And uh, the pygmies are a very nomadic people. They travel in, uh, in, in their tribes in, into the jungle. They are, they are elephant hunters, and so they follow the elephant herds throughout the central, very central part of the Congo. And, uh, and so they, they travel a lot, and, 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 and it's very rare, it's very hard to, to reach them with the gospel. But we had heard one of our churches that were on the, right on the river, uh, on the Congo River, they had heard that the, that the pygmies had come out to trade with them. And so they, it was a time and opportunity to share the gospel with them. And so uh, we got the word, we put a team together of about uh, 20 Africans, and uh, we had a couple of uh, uh, short-term missionaries and myself. We got loaded our stuff up on a couple of trucks. Uh, we loaded our back of our pickups with bicycles and projectors. We were going to show the Jesus film. We were all excited. We were, people were praying for us, and we headed on this journey. It took four it took 14 hours on the first day of the trip just driving over really bad roads bumping and going through potholes and and, and crossing rivers and uh, it took us 14 hours to finally get to the Congo River and at the Congo River we have the town of Bumba we have a church there and so that night we showed the Jesus film to the church but then we went to sleep and the next morning we got up really early in the morning and we loaded up two dugout canoes we put all our stuff in it all the paraphernalia the bicycles and all that and the people got in and we started rowing up a river eight hours paddling up river the missionaries we got our paddles we got courtesy paddles that basically means that the Africans were doing the work and we we missionaries just had the paddle to just to paddle when we felt like it and so we would paddle along get a little exercise get a little tired we set it down and we just chit chat and talk and anyway we paddled up the river for eight hours we paddled finally got to the across the river we got got to the beachhead across the river and we got out, put our bicycles out, and then the rest of the, the, the Africans got stayed in the canoes, and they went up river a little bit and took a tributary up to this one village where we were going to meet them. And we rode on our bicycles, and we, re we got on our bicycles, and we pedaled and pedaled and pedaled. This is the second day. And we finally got, uh, after about four, hour, four to five hours of pedaling, we finally got to that village where we were expecting to see the canoes and those people that got men in the canoes, but they never showed up. A tree had fallen across the little tributary river and they got stuck overnight and they had to sleep in the dugout canoes with all of our stuff. But we camped out, we didn't have it, we just all had our bicycles and so we opened some, you know, opened up, we lay, basically laid on the ground and, and we had a very cold night and uh, and, and uh, we ate some, just some, some monkey meat of the village and then the next morning we woke up in the morning, the canoe still hadn't come but they had gotten word that they were making it upriver but they wanted us to go into the jungle, head down the trail into the jungle on the jungle in the third day. Now this part we left the bikes behind. This was just a jungle path, just a little little bit of a trail into the jungle. The, the, our guide had a machete and he was cutting out, uh, cutting out branches and we walked and we walked for six hours through the jungle, around trees, around. We went through two marsh areas where the, where the, where the, uh, where the muck was standing up at our knees and we had to like stomp through this muck and, and I actually had to carry the other missionary lady with me across it on my back and we cr cross these, this, this marsh area and then we, we actually went to an area where we saw in the grass this whole, all the grass was laid down and matted down and they said this is where an elephant had been sleeping about two hours earlier. So we're right in the thick of it. We're seeing monkeys overhead screaming and screeching across the tree tops. Um, it was beautiful. It was a lush, lush garden. And, uh, and we finally, after six hours, we walked into this pygmy village. What an joy, what an excitement. These people, these pygmy villages had never seen a white, I was the first white person, man, that they had ever seen. And, uh, and which is, you know, they go, whoa, you guys are big. <laughs> so, so we come in, and they're so happy to see us. They're, they're start singing and chanting. And, uh, and they were just welcoming us as best as they could. They had prepared, they live in these little, they look like igloos. They, live, they, they took the bark off trees and they make little igloo houses. And that's where they lived in and they showed us where we would live. 
And uh, I tell you, you, I actually had to get down on my hands and knees to crawl into the doorway. It was so small. And I get inside, and the bed was only like maybe four feet long. And so they had to, uh, they had to go get cut some more branches and extend the bed a little bit more. So they, they got a longer bed for me. And so there we were. We were going to be in there for three days showing the Jesus film. Well, at this point, uh, we were overjoyed and excited about being there and all this. And then, but what happened, started happening in the evening, uh, the, all of the things that could go wrong with a projector went wrong. First, the generator couldn't work. It didn't work. We carried it all the way in there. Three days of carrying this generator, and we get in, and it wasn't working. So we couldn't show the film the first night. And the next, the next day, we sent a runner back to the village and got some tools, and he came back, and they got the uh, generator repaired. And it was working really well, and then they hooked up the projector, and uh, and the bulb went out. And like, oh no! And we only had we had a spare bulb, and so we were like, okay, we only have one more night, and we want to make sure whatever pro causes this problem with the bulb, it doesn't happen again. So they went over the engine, they went over the generator, the projector, and they make sure. And so the next night, the third night, we stick the the spare bulb into the projector, and we start in. We get one reel of the three reels of the Jesus film going. And, and the bulb went out again. And so we were not able to show the whole Jesus film. We were very disappointed. We had been working during the day. Uh, one of the short-term missionaries was a dental hygienist, so she was working on pulling teeth and teaching them how to keep their teeth clean. And uh, we were sharing and talking with them, visiting with them, and doing it during the daytime. But we were really disappointed that after three days, not one pygmy came to know Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we were really disappointed. The next morning we went to bed that night, very dis disheartened, very discouraged, and we went to bed that night, and the next morning it starts raining. We're having, we have to walk out. The time constraints pushes that we have to leave the next morning, and we wake up and it's raining. We're going to have to be walking out through the jungle with all our stuff laden down in, in the rain. And so we were really disappointed with, I mean, with the whole event of the trip, and then the dis disappointing walking out in the rain. and. And we were just, it was just downcast. Everybody was just disappointed. And, uh, and so we were out there, and the pastor that was kind of leading the whole expedition, he, he comes up to me and says, Tim, you know, would you come out and just say a farewell to the pygmies? Tell them that we want to come back. We want to be able to come back and share the film with them. And as I got out to walk, to talk, talk to this pygmy village, I had to stand under a big, huge banana leaf, just, just a, like an umbrella to keep me dry a little bit. And I just prayed. I said, Lord, could you just give me a story, something that will somehow convey the love that you have for these pygmy village that are out in the jungle, that you have not forgotten them, that you care for them. And, uh, and so I prayed this little prayer, and then I stood under this banana leaf, and I began to tell them about, I told them a story. I said, you know, God is like a father who had two sons. And one son went out into the jungle to go hunting, and he went out, and he was gone two, three, four, five, a whole week. And the father knew that his son was lost in the jungle, and his son was going to die in the jungle, and he loved his son. And so he turned to his only other son, and he says, go find your brother and bring him home. Show him the way home. So his, older, so his other brother went into the jungle looking, hunting, and found his brother who was dying out in the jungle. And he says, follow me, and I'll show you the way home to the father. It was a simple story. And I told him, I said, that's the picture of God. I says, we are here lost in this jungle, separated from God. He loves us, but he doesn't, but we don't know how to get back to the Father. So God sends his only son, Jesus, down into the jungle, finds the path that leads us to our, our house, to our hearts. And he says, and he says, follow me, and I'll show you the way back to the Father. And as I and as I turned to him, I said, how many here would like to pray to follow Jesus back to God the Father? And amazingly, the whole village came to accept Jesus Christ. The whole village, that morning in the rain, came out, stood in the rain, and the whole village, 200 pygmies, prayed to receive Jesus Christ. It was an exciting time. We were thrilled with what what, what God was doing in this in this village. I mean, we, it, it didn't matter. The rain, Carol, I don't even remember the story coming back. There wasn't anything eventful in the 
fact of going back when I re when we remembered and rejoiced with this pygmy village coming to know Christ. We left a team of the Africans there to guide them, to disciple them, to to establish them as a as a congregation, as a, as as followers of Jesus Christ. And we went on and we returned. And that was, it was so exciting to see the end of that, to see that, that come to, to fruition. We attempted with our efforts, but God in His just love and, and a simple little story conveyed the love that Jesus had for them and God had for them and that the whole village came to know Christ. The conclusion and the exciting part of the story is that even after this, even like 10 years later, 10 years later, the church is established. They have sent two of the pygmy village from that village, pygmy men from that village to go to Bible school, to become pastors. And so now they have a congregation, they have a pygmy pastors that they still are nomadic. They still travel in the jungle. They still hunt the elephants. But they go as a body of believers, a body of Christ. And, and it's exciting to see that, that even now the church is expanding. So thank you for this opportunity to tell you this wonderful, marvelous story about God's love for us, us and the efforts that we push to go there. I would ask that you continue to pray for us as we serve Jesus Christ, our Lord, in Congo. Thank you.